Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. Hello, and welcome to Knocked Prone, a podcast of high crits, small fits, and varying wits. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I am joined here by the player, Mason, playing Lakir. All right, awesome. As last we left our adventurers, Lakir, through the instruction of Vecna, went through the prismatic sand dunes where he found Neri the half-dragon, who was a descendant of Archon the Cruel, the previous champions of Vecna, who gave her his hand, and Tiamat, who he is currently serving, but Vecna, not wanting to share a gift so lovely as her hand with a non-follower, decided to send Lakir to go fetch her hand, and now Lakir, after being fully damaged from necrotic energy from the hand, is... How many hit points are you at? One. Oh, man. So Lakir's at one hit point currently. You're standing with the hand in your hand, and Vecna pings this this little beacon for you to follow again, but then her voice whispers in your head, I'll heal you if you require. I, I don't want to overstep my bounds. Of course, you don't have to worship me for this healing to take place. I just... I don't want to give you something you don't a gift you do not want to receive yes healing would be appreciated all right well no thank you note is required and heal 70 points cool well that just is full yes so she'll cast the spell the six level spell heal on you healing you back to 60 which is full and then uh she will whisper now that you're all healed make sure to bring my hand you can take whatever you'd like from the castle uh desecrate it as much as you see fit that I can certainly do. Do I still have Fly on me still? So Fly would at this point have uh, ended. It took a little while for Vecna to actually say something to you, and um, the, the battle took like what, like a minute probably. So, okay. I mean, at this point, I feel like the scariest part of the tower is gone. So um, I will cast Detect Magic again just to have that up while I'm going through, um, and I'll. Just try to climb the tower again, searching for anything interesting. Okay. And can you go ahead and roll me an investigation check? 17. 17. Okay. So in the room, you are going to find 150 gold pieces. You will find many things tied to, uh, tied to Tiamat, including uh, cultist worshiper robes, the altar that Neri was praying at, uh, worshiping Tiamat, uh, you'll also find uh, various idols and things just okay. strewn throughout the the castle. I'll take anything light or th- nothing that's going to weigh me down, but I do right. want a memento of um, this particular god in specific. Once, like, I want to see if it matches any of the symbols I already came across in Great Grimbopolis that I have. I guess Litzy has those though, so. I can only do that through memory. Do they seem to... Does it seem familiar? You do not see any markings of a particular god that um, that you... Rec- like, the dark god markings that you recall are not in this room. They are more... Uh, less so 
uh, evil looking and more I mean they're still evil looking but they're more draconic focused like wings and fangs and little statuettes of dragons okay I'll probably take a few of the statuettes depending on how big they are and just add them to my pack and I'll climb back down and be on my way no less for the wicked so you could probably take one statue I mean you could potentially take more they're they're pretty bulky like okay. one there's there's two that kind of are like like smaller gargoyles but they're made entirely of stone and then one that's like a it's like a pocket version of like a an idol to tiamat but it's it's a it's a black dragon with these emerald eyes and on the side of its head it is carved uh tiamat like a symbol of tiamat i will take that okay you fully desecrate the temple Knocking over things. Yeah, as I was about to say, as I exit, I, I mean, I don't have a ton of stuff. Um, you hear Vecna in your head say, "Cast your spells. I'll make it worthwhile." Cool. I'm just gonna cast a bunch. I'm gonna cast Mage Hand and put it next to the tower, and then I'm going to use some arcane darts to just try to knock out basically corner pieces of the areas, and then. When I feel it's weak enough, just push try it to over. push it over with the mage hand, yeah. Okay, roll me just one luck check to see how well you do. With a 17 luck check on, on all your things that you do, you are able to fully knock over this tower. I mean, the foundation is still there, but like, to shreds, you say. Okay. And then, one job done, next one to go. And I will start traveling in the direction of the gleam. Okay, so uh, you will take some time, but you exit the prismatic desert and you enter into a hilly glade of just hills of grass. But the light kind of takes you through a valley of one of the hills and you see a door in the side of a hill, similar to like a hobbit door in the side of a hill. It's circular and it is black. But um, the light is gleaming right on the door. Okay, I will go up um, to the door. And before doing anything, I'm going to close my eyes and think concentratedly towards Vecna. Friend or foe? This is where I want you to go. You may enter. I will politely, because I was raised with manners, um, like... Open the door while knocking on it as... I'm indecent! (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, yeah, I'll knock on the door and just kind of announce my presence as I go in. Hello! Um, I'm... was sent here? Your voice echoes off of the walls of this chamber. You notice some evil symbols strewn across uh, about the room... There, uh, they, you do not recognize them as the evil symbols you've seen uh, previously. These are symbols of Vecna. There's no one in here at the moment, and you hear a whisper, and Vecna says, Good. Now, in the center of the room, you should find an altar. And you hear her snap again, and a... <laughs> up a stone altar will appear uh, with a flat surface on the top. And it has, like, a chalk outline of where the hand should go. Okay. Yeah, I'll walk up, lay the hand on top of it. I sense that you've taken something from Tiamat's lair. Care to share what you've brought? Of course. You said to desecrate it, and this seemed like the most valuable thing there. And I'll pull out the statuette. She'll say, I was hoping you'd choose this. My soul is tied to another plane. So is this creature's soul. And whirling blue and white energy will... Around this statuette, causing this, like, vortex to appear over the statuette. And then it all goes into the open mouth of this dragon statuette. Um, And the eyes, the green eyes, glow even greener. And then Vecna says, Here, take it outside. Take it outside. Lay it on the ground. As you place it on the ground, a large (laughs) dragon appears before you. I'll stumble, like, take a step back and... Hello. Uh, We're friends, I think. 
So this creature, this dragon, uh, the color of it is black. It is a very, uh, it is skeletal in uh, stature. It has like bones for wings and bones for a body, but they're all blackened. And the green eyes from the gemstones are still green on there. And there's a green necrotic energy coming out of its mouth. And Vecna says, Neri was in possession of my hand for long enough. I took one of the followers of Tiamat and their soul that was not at rest, and I have gifted it to you. You can use this once a day for an hour, and it can't go into small spaces. I'll send you the rest of the details it's later. A large, large it's a large dragon. creature, so if you were like, I'm going to go into this dungeon and summon a dragon, it wouldn't work. Right. This dragon uh, rears its head back and then bows its head to you as Vecna has tied its soul to you. All right, I'll kind of reach out and broke its head a bit or bones or whatever yeah. it is. Does he have a name? I was hoping you'd give him one. Names of dragons are sacred. Why not desecrate that as well? I think I need some time. I want to make it meaningful. All right. Of course. Um, well, this dragon is a gift, but it is also a tool. My eye is northeast of here, right before the winter court is a canyon. Canyon entrance made of, well, candy. And there is a volcano that is made out of candied glass. And this candied glass that has erupted from this volcano entrapped my eye by coincidence and a man has found it he's not been using it he's just holding on to it I just need you to take it and come back very well casualties are up to your discretion I do not know whether this man holds malice though that is up to you of course and with the dragon by my side I think They'll be a little bit more eager to talk. Of course, of course. As long as you can make it there within the hour. Speaking of, I believe I need to rest before I have another fight of some kind. I simply do not have the arcane power to carry myself through again. But may I rest here? Of course, of course. Um, what do you need? Just time. Time? Four hours to meditate, collect myself, and regather my energy, and then I shall be on my way. Okay. Is there anything that I can provide you with? He'll think for a second. I'm trying to decide whether to use, like, try to manipulate and get as much as I can out of Vecna, or if I'm, like, standoffish to her. Um, you are my champion. A wish is due. I would like something to make... And I'll, I'll kind of hold hold up my gauntlet and say, this has been a project I've been working on for quite some time. The overall goal is to make my spells more accurate and to hit harder. You would be willing to provide that enchantment to me, assist me in my upcoming efforts to help you. Very well. I think that as long as you are employed by me, Gauntlet shall serve you well. I'll kind of... No. No, that's not what I want. This Gauntlet is my own. If you cannot empower it without making it part of you, perhaps you can provide me the materials to empower it myself. <sighs> you... Bend my hand, so roll me a percep or persuasion. Okay, actually, persuasion is one of the few skills I took. Nice proficiency. Proficiency in because you figured that I like to roll persuasion checks a lot. <laughs> no, because my background is noble, so I figured. Oh yeah, not bad. Uh, Sixteen total. Sixteen, very well. I can provide you this power, 
only to show you that it is possible. I do not need to provide you with materials. I am my own master. You will not have control over me, as I will not have control over you. An agreement is all. An alliance. You empower me so I can in turn empower you. Okay. Well, and she snaps her fingers. Your wish is granted. Okay. Is there anything you would like to dream about? I want... I want to be with Phoenix. It's a dream. It's not real. It's not anything like that. Just allow me this reprieve. Okay. And you close your eyes, and Phoenix is there with you, and you are... uh, You recall a memory from your childhood. uh, One of your fond memories. Go ahead and tell me about what you're doing in this dream with Phoenix. Okay. Um, It probably would have been one of the first times um, that I actually learned to summit Phoenix after a failed training session um, in which my father would have um, locked me in my room with forbidding me to leave, um, restricting food, water, and things like that. Um, And during this time, I would be focusing my power to bring about a companion. And I would probably be recalling my first heist with him, so to speak, um, of using him in order to ensure my father was away and that before being able to sneak out of my, like, break out of my room and to wander down to either the libraries or to the wizard's tower or wherever I could go um, at the moment and was reading under probably, like, the... Because nearby to my home would have been the park with all the, um, the rabbits and different stuff like that, so probably just in a nice area there, stroking Phoenix and reading a book and just enjoying the time. Yeah, so uh, all that happens uh, for a split second. Um, Your father appears in your dream and you hear the rumbling voice of Vecna say, No! And a hand will come out, the hand of Vecna that you have transported will come out and will squash Amalek and the uh, the image of him will, uh, in a fit of smoke, dissipate. And it seems that anything that Amalek was doing to be in your dreams is no longer able to happen. Okay. And yeah, at the end of everything. Um, so to finish off the enchantment, um, I cast the level two spell Magic Weapon to solidify everything. Um, and essentially it will act as a plus one wand. So any spell attacks will have a plus one to hit Hit. and damage. Okay, wonderful. Yep. You wake up and the gauntlet is exactly what you wanted it to be. Um, Vecna has recharged your statuette to allow you to use the dragon to assist you in your mission. Cool. It's it's Decently far, right? The distance I have to travel. Okay. I was tempted to use a fly spell to make it like yeah. super quick, but I'm not going to do that. So I will... Your dragon has the same fly speed as you would with the fly spell with 60 feet. Right. But I want to save the dragon. Gotcha. In case I need him. I don't want to... Understand. I don't want to use him for travel. That yeah. feels like a, a waste of a power, you know? Yeah. So that I'll just start traveling in that direction. Um kind of the memory of Phoenix and everything just replaying over and over. I personally am going to say that my character would be semi-obsessed with it. So I would like for anything that he's like looking out for in his travels to be like like maybe the fast traveling in on the DM screen, which is like minus five to perception checks or whatever, just sure. because he wouldn't be paying attention. Paying attention. Well, um, the dragon being connected to both you and to Vecna um, will have the travel place that in mind that Vecna was sending you to. Uh, like, it has the glint in its eye that it is being drawn towards. And so um, you are fully able, without any perception checks, to fly over 
um, all of the Feywild, and you find you eventually get to a glass volcano. Um, well, it's a volcano that is emitting candy that is quickly drying into glass candy, and you see a man with a pickaxe who's chipping away the glass candy and then bringing the glass candy in a wheelbarrow to a cart, which he's set up an intricate display of many different types of glass candied candies. I'm on the dragon? Yeah, currently. Land, dismount. Ho! Oh, uh, sir, um, what race is he? He is a half-elven man. Okay. Um, I am looking for a particular item that seems to have been lost in these wastes. Are you aware of anything in or anyone who is selling these trinkets or odds that were found in these volcano candy glass? Such as yourself, it seems. Right, right. I'm selling. I'm selling candied glass. I'm more interested in the objects trapped within the candied glass. Do you have any of those souvenirs? Oh, um, I do. Hi, I'm Drogan. 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 Wonderful to meet you. Nice to meet you too. My name is Lakir. Ah, Lakir. Well, uh, Lakir, I think I might have exactly what you're looking for, but, uh, well, I'm not really interested in money. What are you interested in? Memories. Not to take a memory, but to share with you a memory. I'd give you gladly what you're after, as long as you'd be able to tell me one thing. What's that? Wholeheartedly, without anything else in the world, what do you love? I'll kind of think for a bit and... My companions. They're the only family I've ever had. They're true to me. And even though they were forced with me, they've treated me with more respect than anyone else I've met. And will me giving you this item, will it get you closer to the ones you love? No. It, it, it won't. Um, it will help us on our way, though. I... My group and I have been wronged by many people, and while my reasons for that object won't bring me closer to them, it will bring everyone closer to their goals. Oh. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's a roundabout way of saying that yes, it would help inadvertently, but still. Um, and as he goes over to his cart and like shifts through a bunch of the rock candy um, and finds the eye that you're looking for. Um, and as he turns around, you notice a glint of yellow in his eyes. Um, you hadn't really noticed before. He is a half elf drow. Okay. So a lot of the humanoid, um, human uh, aspects have taken over um, the drow aspects. So it's very like subtle, but important. Um, so he has these yet like really piercing yellow eyes like a drow would have. And, um, but he spins around on his heels and walks towards you with the eye. And he says, um, what's your name? My given name is Lakia, but my chosen name is Aramund. Aramund. Well, Aramund, I'm of the belief that you can choose whatever you want. Um, speaking of choosing whatever you want, here's some... And he, he'll hold up a sack of candied glass and hand you it. He's like, give these to your uh, friends for some... for their enjoyment, um... And I hope that this aisle gets you closer to what you want. But remember, nothing is worth more than the things that you love. 
even if it is a means to getting to what you want. Love is important. And um, I wish you and your dragon adieu. Thank you. Um, You've given me a part of yourself, and I'll kind of hold up the glass. Let me give you part of mine, um, and I'll hand him out one of my chaos gems um, and hand that to him. Um, This gem holds magical power of There's no way of really knowing what it does, but I hope that in the future it will aid you as you have me. I think my daughter will like this. I'm going to go give it to her now. Your daughter? daughter? Yeah, I have a daughter. Daughter. Okay. Daughter, yeah. Sorry, no. I've got the thick accent. No, no no worries. I, I'm not from around here. Um, ah, neither am I. <laughs> next two of us. Well, I bid you adieu. Uh, Thank you again, and I'll kind of go saddle back onto the dragon. Okay. Um, so as you saddle back up on the dragon, the dragon lets out a, a huff out of its nostrils of of this necrotic smoke, and it looks back at you, and Vecna says in your mind, there's not enough time. Quickly, quickly. And she, tra- uh, a teleportation circle appears in front of you as your dragon dissipates into the into the statuette of which you um, can take. And the room that you were last in is now filled with one uh, woman in the center of the room, nine months pregnant, in the middle of labor. Oh, dang. And she is heaving and is like, ah, can you help? Of course, uh... What do you need? And then Vecna whispers in your head and says, I can guide this woman through her pregnancy. There's a staff next to the altar that I have left. I need you to use it and cast mass dispel magic. The, the staff will guide you through it. I just need a body to cast it. It will only last for 30 seconds maximum. Mass to spell magic, it will end the curse on this woman. And it will save her life. Do I believe her? Roll me an insight. Doubt that I'm gonna actually do anything, but moms are a soft spot for look here, so natural twenty for twenty one. Let's do a roll off, son. <laughs> Two nat twenties. Ooh, natural twelve. Yeah, natural seven. So eight. Eight. Okay. Um, With your natural 20, even though she got an opposed natural 20, you generally believe her. Okay. Genuinely, not generally. Yeah, I I figured that's (laughs) a do that. Um, I will um, say, I believe this is going to help you, and I will kind of hit the staff on the ground and cast um, Master Spell Magic. Yeah, so a wave of energy shoots out from this staff. The sun, um, there's a little sunlight in the room, eclipses as you do this. Um, and through the entire Fey, uh, Fey Wild, magic is gone for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Goodness. And the curse on this woman ends. She delivers a baby girl of which she swaddles herself with a blanket that was provided to her. And um, she walks over and says, Thank you. Um, Me and my daughter are forever in your debt. Um, Please place the Eye of Vecna on the altar. Of course. um, I'll take out the eye and put it on the altar. (sighs) The woman hands you the baby. She claps her hands together and holds her arms out and then green energy radiates from out of her and her body falls on the floor dead all the all the energy is taken from it there's a ball of green light and then it enters into the baby that you were holding and the baby grows rapidly and to set it down yeah yeah grows a long slick black hair and 
has elven features, but they are also half elven features. And the little girl stands up, 14 years of age now, and smiles and says, Hi, Lakir. Hello. What should I call you, little one? Well, um, you can call me Viv. Viv? My full name's Vecna. Oh. Oh. Of course. I, it's astounding to see you here in the person. It's nice to see you as well. Better than seeing you through dreams. I agree. Now, um, a payment is due. Snaps her fingers. Out from the ground, the form of Phoenix appears, and all the shadows in the room swirl around and around and around this image of Phoenix. And eventually a bright light fills the room and then is overfilled by darkness. And standing in front of you is Phoenix, though Phoenix is different. Phoenix is made up entirely of shadow. Phoenix. It lets out a little... Why... Why isn't he the way he was before? Oh, well, Phoenix's body is still in the Shadow Realm, where you sent it, to the Shadow Realm. And I can't retrieve that? Well, you could, but you'd have to go down to the Shadow Realm to get it. Am I strong enough to do so now? I don't know, are you? I have no experience with that. Do you know where his body is? Well, I assume it'd be where you left it, in that grove. But in the Shadow Realm, you see creatures' bodies that are given as a deal in the Shadow Realm. Many babies are taken to the Shadow Realm um, because their parents will have promised them to to devils or the sort to um, amass this great power. And these bodies are trapped in the Shadow Realm and, well, the soul can leave, but only if provoked. And well, here you go. Here's Phoenix. Can I've I done touch it. it. Yeah. And it feels feels like, like Phoenix. Phoenix. Cold, very cold. I'll stroke him, and I'll be happy. But there'll be just reluctance in general. I I have to have Phoenix back. Not a shadow of him. I I. I need you to send me back to the Shadow Realm. I need him. Please. I'll, I'll go to the grove and find his body there. But I need him. I can't promise he'll make it back. Are you alright, Phoenix? Are you happy at all? I'll kind of take him and hold him and just be trying to basically warm him up as futile as I know it will be Uh, shadow tears from the fox's eyes fall to to, onto you is it a fine familiar will still work on him and stuff like that it will now work again it the only reason phoenix's body and soul were trapped in the shadow fell and so you couldn't summon his body from that plane of existence because it was trapped there to this plane of existence so now phoenix's soul is allowed to leave the shadow realm and come to you but his body is still trapped. Okay, well, I don't think I'm strong enough alone, but I have friends, and together we have power. I'll take my leave for now, and I'll work this out with them. Do you know where Phoenix's body is? I know where it is. I can... I can ping you like I did before. Even in the overworld? Well, yes, but his body's in the shadow shadow realm. I... I'm aware. I just... I think I can get him back. You'll still be with me? I'll be with you every step of the way. I mean, my power is a little more limited now. I understand, but the important thing is that we can still communicate. I'll be in contact. For now... Oh, God. And I will 
I will send a message to Litzy. Um, then I'll say, I've finished my business. Um, I am ready to meet back up. Are you safe? Well, I can't say we're doing great, but um, we're alive. So we'll see you soon. All right. My th- companions and I are going to be meeting up in the summer court. Um, I have one final request from you. The dragon, would you be able to use your power to disguise it? I don't think my companions would necessarily agree with an undead dragon following us around. Hmm. What's your favorite color, look here? I'll look down at my robe. Blue. All right. Well, an emerald shimmering dragon... Uh, the, the gemstones change from green gems to blue. Um, and she says, everyone else will see this as a blue good dragon that has no intent of harming you or anyone around you, though it is a gemstone dragon. So it is emerald in to everyone else's eyes, but to you, you will see it for what it truly is. That's fine. I just need a way of explaining all of this without drawing attention. Have you named it? Erudite. I think Erudite is a fine name. Well, um, thank you for bringing my body back. Might I ask a small favor of you? What more? Do you have an insignificant item on your person that you will no longer be needing? What type of item? Anything. Big, small. I'll, I can, I'll pull out the wand of flying. I'll say, I think I've used its charges for the day, and it may disappear in a bit. Would this do? If you give that to me your wand will no longer appear in the bag or that wand. It will be tied to me. Are you looking for an item of value in specific? No. Meaningless. The more it blends in with its surroundings, the better. How about I tell you what I have and you can take the pick of what sounds most desirable. I have plenty of darts, arrows. I have several books at my disposal as well as I have a good amount of gems. A book would be wonderful. Alright, I will take out the um, magic creation handbook. Okay. Because I already have the pocket book of it, so I will give that to her. Uh, She will say, this will work wonderfully. She places it on a bookshelf, and then I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, great. So, dirty 20. Okay, it's going to fail. Okay. We're talking Vecna here. That's fair. (laughs) A portal is going to open up in front of you. Viv, or Vecna, um, is going to say, Goodbye, Lakir. It was nice meeting you. And she will push you out of the portal, and you appear in the summer court, and you hear the snap of Vecna... Uh, who casted Modify Memory on you, did the teleportation circle. You are now with Litzy and Torin, and she pushes you through this teleportation circle. You hear a snap, and the last 24 hours, your memories are with Litzy and Torin. Okay. You no longer remember anything about the past 24 hours with Modify Memory being cast on you. And so, with that, I think that's where we're going to end our session. Sounds good. My name is Cade, and I am the host and DM of this Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition adventure, and I'm joined here by the player. Mason, playing look here. All right, awesome. If you like this podcast, go ahead and drop us a little bit of a review on whatever you're listening to. It really helps us out. And re- refer us to a friend as well, because friends are great. D&D and friends is even better. And if you love our show, go on and check out our Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash knocked. Thank you for the guest appearance from Litzy this episode. Uh, Brooke was great to 
help us out in that message there. And um, But remember, that's patreon.com forward slash knocked, patreon.com forward slash knocked. That's knocked, K-N-O-C-K-E-D. And we hope you remember when life knocks you flat on your back, all you got to do is keep rolling. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.